Genesis chapter 4. We're going to study a little bit on the life, <coughs> the life of uh, Abel, all right? Cain and Abel. We're going to look a little bit on that. East of Eden is where uh, uh, Cain was thrown to. Have you ever seen the movie, East of Eden? All right. If you're in Hebrews, we're going to look at cha chapter 11 and just uh, one verse that is, that is mentioned there. Uh, there's actually two, but I'm just going to read one. I'm just going to read one just to, to get us started here. The Bible says in verse 4, By faith Abel uh, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Now I want you to realize what he says here. He says God <clears throat> saw the gift that, that Abel brought before him, and of course, God accepted his gift, but his gift was more excellent gift than Abel. Now, they both gave, but one gift was accepted. One gift was good. The other one wasn't. Now, let's go to, let's go, if you would, to Genesis <clears throat> chapter 4. And of course, uh, uh, we're going to read a little bit and study a little bit on this because sometimes people ask about this. Now, <clears throat> sometimes people say, where did Cain get his wife? And I say to them, don't be asking about other people's wives. Amen. <laughs> but the truth is that, remember, they lived a long time. I don't know how long before, after, after that they had begotten Cain and Abel, I don't know how long Cain and Abel lived before this took place, the incident. But I want you to listen to how long that uh, uh, Adam lived. Look at verse uh, chapter 5 and verse 5 real quickly, and then we'll go back to chapter 4. It says, in all the days of Adam... That, excuse me, that Adam lived for 930 years. That's a little while. Amen. Amen. And he, uh, and he died. So he lived 930 years. That's a long time. Yeah. So if you, if, you were, if you were to have kids and you were, let's say, uh, let's say God cre when God created them, they were in their 30s. Let's assume that. They had kids. Well, I got news for you. By the time they got old and died and so on, those kids are old, old as dirt. Amen? So they had more than just one child. The story just focuses on those two. But I'm sure they had all kinds of... Who they married was their sister at that particular time because it wasn't uh, wicked in those days to do so. The, the earth was multiplying. Now, as uh, the earth began to, to multiply... And let me say to you that as men became more wicked, God began to say, no more. <laughs> Let's stop this. And of course, it all stopped. All right. So pretty soon, uh, they were just marrying their cousins. Now, somebody says, oh, people married their cousin. That was wicked. Well, I got news for you. In the uh, Old Testament, they always did that. You were going to get married. They said, well, go down to your uncle's house and, and find you a wife. That's the way they would do it. All right. Now, who says it's wicked? Uh, probably people in America, I don't know who else would say it was wicked, but they're, they're the only people that I know of that considers it uh, a sin or wicked to marry a cousin or something like that, okay? Just so you know that. Uh, there, then the Bible doesn't really say anything about that. As a matter of fact, it's okay in the Bible to marry a cousin. Just so you know that. There's nothing in the Bible that says it's wrong. Now, do I consider it right? Uh, no, but the Bible doesn't, but I can't tell you it's wrong if the Bible doesn't say it's wrong. Do I think it's wrong? Yes. I think you ought to marry your, your, your first cousin at least. The second one, maybe. Amen. No, I'm kidding. All right, let's look at chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have begotten a man from the Lord, and she began to be, and she and, and, uh, let's try and she again bare his uh, 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 his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. Now notice what Abel did; he kept what sheep. He says, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. That simply means that he planted corn and all. That's what I'll call it. I'm not sure what he planted. That simply meant he planted corn and all that stuff, uh, potatoes, whatever he planted. All right. Uh, then the Bible says. In the process of time, we don't know how much time, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought, for, brought forth, uh, brought of the first fruit, of, no, of the fruit of the ground an, off, an offering unto the Lord. 
So Cain says, I'm going to take an offering to God. And he takes an offering from where? He takes an offering uh, from the uh, maybe potatoes or tomatoes, whatever he was growing. And he takes it to the Lord. Now you would say, that's, that's good. He's doing a good thing. Amen. But he's not. Now I'm going to show you why. Look at chapter 3 real quickly. Look at chapter 3. After that Adam and Eve had sinned, in chapter 3, we find out why what he was doing was not the right thing. All right, now, look at chapter 3. And when you get to look at verse 20, 21, verse 21. And, and Adam also and his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. After they had sinned, the Lord slew a beast and covered them with the skin of that beast. To put clothes on them. That's the first one to die in the Bible. Amen? Was the poor animal. More likely a sheep. Now let me, let me tell you why that's important. This is the beginning of redemption. He slew the animal and covered them. Jesus died and covers our sins. Alright, so just so you'll see it. Then he goes on to say, then he goes on to say, uh, and now let's go back, he said, let's go back to verse uh, to verse 3, uh, of course, and, and of course, he got the offering from the ground. No, excuse me, verse 4. And Abel, uh, and Abel, he also brought uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the first, uh, of the first link. Now, let me start right there. Notice what he's bringing of the first link. He chose the best. Of course, don't realize he saw the young, the young uh, 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 sheep. He was a keeper of sheep. He saw the first sheep. He said, boy, these are nice. this is a nice one right here. I'll give that one to God. All right, first thing means he chose one of the first. Had to be one of the best. So he gives that to the Lord of his flock. He said, of the fat thereof. He said, and the Lord had respect unto Abel uh, to, to, and, to, and to his offering. But, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. And his consonant fell. In other words, you could see it in his face that he was mad. Now, wait a minute. He had done wrong because he offered the wrong thing to God. Keep this in mind. Sometimes you and I say, I I'm going to give this to God or I'm going to give God something, but I'm going to give God what I want. I'm sorry, it don't work that way. You give God what God asked for. Amen. You don't give him what you say. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I could go, I could give you, for example, a, I remember a, a, an old man that told Brother John's one time, we were, we were at a certain church, and he said to Brother John, me and God worked out a deal with my tithe, and, and God said, I don't have to tithe. No, God didn't tell him that. You see what he was doing? So he gave what he wanted to give, not what God told him to give. Sometimes with our time, sometimes with our life, we give God what we want to give, not what God demands of us. Now, let's continue. So he gives that, and we'll read part of it. Now, I, I'm not going to preach very long, by the way, just a few more minutes, and I'm going to stop because of uh, all the things we have to do tonight. So he goes on to say, he was very wroth, and then in verse 7, oh no, excuse me, in verse 6, and the Lord said unto Cain, why, are, why art thou wroth? He says, and why is thy, thy, continent, thy continent fallen? <clears throat> If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? You know what he could have done was bought a good little sheep from his brother. Amen? Uh, he could have bought it from his brother and said, oh, I'll give you all this fruit for one of those. And his brother probably would have said, that's fine. And he could have gave God what God wanted. But watch this. Won't it be accepted? And if thou doest well, <coughs> if thou doest well, uh, excuse me, <coughs> except, and if thou doest not well, Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his, shall be his desire, and thou shalt excuse me, and thou shall rule over him. Now, I want you to notice what he says to him. Now, if you do this, he said, uh, sin lies at the door. Listen what he said. Sin lies at the door. Now I'm going to tell you something before I go too far. God always tells you when you're close to sin. Amen. You don't just fall into, no, that didn't happen. God always warns you when you're that close. 
And he said, if, don't, if you don't do well, then he says, sin lies at the door. What was he telling him? You're, gonna, you're mad at your brother. You're going to end up killing your brother. Because you're still angry over this. But if you do well, I'll accept you. Uh, God's pretty fair, isn't he? If you do well, I'm going to accept you. Then Cain, excuse me, notice he told him, sin lies at the door. Uh, he said, and, and, unto, and unto thee shall be his desire. That simply means you're going to take over him, and thou shalt rule over him. You're going to kill him. You're going to win over him. Look at what happens. And the Lord said unto Cain, <clears throat> no, excuse me. Yeah, the Lord said unto Cain, uh, where is he? No, I'm sorry, I jumped too far, didn't I? Okay, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, uh, his brother, and it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. We're responsible for our spiritual brothers. Amen. That you don't kill them. Amen. Then he says, now he said, what do you mean kill him? Cost him to backslide. Let's put it that way. He said, and the Lord said unto Cain, uh, where is Abel thy brother? Now, that's not because God didn't know. God wasn't going to come. I wonder where's Abel. I haven't seen it. He wants him to confess. Okay. Where's Abel, your brother? Amen? You ever, your kids ever done something you know they did? You just go, did you do that? Well, you know they did. Well, you say to them, who did that? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't, you know they just want them to confess. Now, watch this. He said, and the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Man, that's a sermon in itself. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, and he said, well, what, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother, uh, brother's blood, crieth unto me from the ground. Now, he knew he had killed him. Amen? He knew he had killed him. But he, he says to God, like if God didn't know, am I my brother's keeper? The truth is, yes, you are. Amen? You are your brother's keeper. And I'm talking spiritually. You're, the, you're your brother's keeper. You are to do the best to be uh, the best testimony, the best whatever, but you're your brother's keeper. Now look at the next verses. He said, now, <clears throat> where am I at here? Oh, verse 11. Like I said, I'm just going to read quite a bit. I, I'll give you some thoughts, and then next week I'll preach a sermon to you. And, and now thou art cursed uh, from the earth which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood and thy, uh, excuse me, from thine hand. Now he says, when thou, when thou tilleth the ground, remember that's what he used to do, he was a farmer, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee strength, a fugitive and a vagabond. Now that word vagabond means he's going to wander the earth from place to place. No prosperity in his life. That's why he said even the ground won't yield you fruit no more. He said, like a vagabond, thou shalt, thou shalt be on the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, excuse me, from thy face I shall be hid. He said, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, therefore, Whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark. Now that word mark simply means a stamp. All right, now I'm giving you that for a reason. It means a stamp. He said, upon Cain, lest any man, lest, and lest any finding him, should slay him. Now let's stop right here. So God puts a mark on him. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach on something or say something here that I want you to realize there are, I think I sent a video to some of you, and you'll probably remember when I, when I make the statement here. <clears throat> there are some independent Baptists and another Baptists and some Pentecosts and uh, Presbyterians and you name it that say that it is a sin before God for a white person to marry a black person. Because the black people have been, what? Marked. And that the mark that he put on them is black. But that's not true. That's not what it's saying. It's just saying, it's just saying that God put a mark on him. So anybody who saw him said, okay, God marked him. We can't do anything, you know, we, we can't do anything to him. But let me give you a, a, just a couple of scriptures. 
Do you know that, in, and, and you don't have to go through all this, but in chapter one, in verse 1 of Numbers 12, Moses marries an Ethiopian woman. Right. She's black. Mm -hmm. People from Ethiopia were black. That's why in Ezekiel 9, 3 and 5, 3 and 5 excuse me, 3 and 4, it says, Can a leopard change its spots? Or Ethiopian its color? Amen? Now, when Moses married this black woman, Miriam and Aaron got mad. You remember that? And because they misbehaved, God made them, God made Miriam white. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but let's talk about it. She becomes white with leopard. The Bible says she becomes white with leopard. <laughs> Amen. She gets mad. You should not have married that black lady. And all of a sudden, she becomes white. I like that story. I told it before. But anyways. But no, but she gets leprosy. Amen? Now I'm telling you that because when they teach such a thing that God never intended for the races to mix, it's not the truth. You have mixed races all over the Bible. Amen. When they conquered a, 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 another a city, rather they were... From, they, were, they weren't Jewish, they weren't uh, Israelites, but they would conquer a city. Whatever they were, he would say, destroy the children. And one of the reasons is those kids would come back and get you. But all the, uh, and destroy the, the women that have child, re, re, destroy them, destroy the men. And, uh, but you can keep the virgins for yourself. If there's any women there that are virgins, you can keep them and, and, uh, uh, and distribute them among yourselves. And they married them, by the way. They didn't just, they weren't their slaves. They married them, and then they would, they would, uh, they would join. Uh, they would join the Jewish religion. Now, what I'm telling you is simply this: God allowed them to marry other religion, other other cultures. So when someone tells you that it's not, it's not the Bible. You might have a preference, and there's nothing wrong with preference, but there's something wrong with prejudice. Amen. Amen. Amen? You can have all the preferences you want, but there's something wrong with you when you become prejudiced in those areas. Now, understand. Uh, understand that the Bible d does not teach that. Now, there's one more thing I want to hit here before I go off of that. And as like I said, I'm going to come back and finish this later. But I want you to notice, if you would, in uh, uh, verse 16, and Cain went, <clears throat> now this is Cain, went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod uh, on, uh, on the east of Eden. I told you guys, that's in the Bible when you see that movie, East of Eden. Mm -hmm. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare who? Enoch. Enoch. So whose son was Enoch? Cain's. That's right. Cain's Cain's son. So just just that little thought, so you guys so you guys will remember that. And of course, he goes on to tell you that he built a city and he named the city after his son Enoch. Okay, the city of Enoch. So some of those things that you read in the book of Enoch, about uh, uh, one percent of that is true. All right, the rest of it go, needs to go in the trash. But just so that you'll understand, that's why the, when people say, how come the book of Enoch is not in the Bible? Because it's a foolish book. Have you ever read any of it? Okay, I read it. That's what I'm saying. Because I did, I just thought, okay, I better read it. When uh, Paul's boss used to challenge me on this, I thought, I'm going to read it. Do you know that because the angels, of course, this didn't happen. I'm just telling you, Enoch. The angels came down, had sex with women. Strange creatures were born. Giants, for one, there were nine 900 feet tall. They never found bones that big. But I'll leave that alone. And because of that, do you know that because of that we have the rhino, the giraffe, and all that? They came from that. How dumb can you be? When the Bible tells you God created the creatures. Amen? I mean, how dumb can it be? Now, let me start here. We're going to go back now just to remind you. And hopefully you learned a few things already just on that. First of all, Understand that the gift he gave was a selected gift, all right? In verse 3, the Bible says that Abel, <coughs> that Abel, uh, uh, right here, no, in verse 1, I'm messing up again. In verse 2, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. Chapter 4 and verse 3. In the process of time, yeah, I was right. That Cain brought uh, the first, the, notice what he brought, and brought the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. Now you notice that on there it doesn't say first fruits. 
He didn't give him his best even then. All of this shows that Cain gave God what he wanted. Right. I don't care what God says. I gave him $10 last week. That's the way some people are. Amen. I gave a dollar, so what? I mean, I mean, don't you remember a year ago I gave $100 to the church? I got news for you. If you the church had to survive on your 100 we, we closed a long time ago. Amen. If all of us gave 100 once a, once a year, we wouldn't have a church. Amen? Mm -hmm. We would have closed this thing years ago. So he says, I gave, I gave you what I wanted, not what the Lord demanded. And so because of that, I think it's a sin when we give to God what we want. But in verse 4, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Abel gave God what God wanted. God wanted the sheep. God wanted the first, uh, the first, uh, the first link of the sheep. He wanted the, the first of that, and he gave God what God demanded. Because he gave God what he demanded, God said, "I was pleased with the offering, and I accepted the offering." Now I don't know how long before the time he offered it to the time he was killed, but it could have been a long time. I really don't know because they lived a lot longer than we do. But whatever happened, he never forgot, and sin became into your life. You know, when you do what you want instead of what God wants, sin's coming into your life. Amen? Amen? I mean, we got to realize we have to do what God tells us to do, not what we want to do. We saw, we saw what God had done in Genesis 3.21 when God had killed that, that, that animal and had clothed Adam and Eve. That's exactly what it was, just the offering. And from that day on, it began to represent Jesus Christ later on. So the offering that they were supposed to give to the Lord was to be what God wanted, not what Abel wanted. Now I'm going to have to stop here because as I said, I'm going to try to quit a little bit early due to the fact that we got something going. But people, I hope just, to, just what we went through at least helped you a little bit on some areas, all right? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here. We ask that you watch over us, be with the kids as they practice, be with us as we go into our meeting. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.